So the story I'm going to tell you is not the story you usually hear. This all was a blessing. The dance has transcended around the world and is strong to date. The story Tony Mr. Wave, or just Wave, Wesley, tells us about the rise of a wildly popular dance form born out of economic disparity and inequity in the South Bronx in the 1970s. They say that the Bronx was burning, but that's not an actual term. That's not what really happened. What happened is that we were being stout, doused, you know, uh, no stores, no, no playgrounds, no parks. It was a concrete jungle, that's what it was. A new genre of music was emerging from the streets, but would eventually be called hip hop. Alongside it came breakdancing. <laughs> What actually is breaking? Breaking is a term that they've developed too. It was b-boying. B-boys to me meant breakers, boogie boys, Bronx boys, b-boys, you know, the Bronx. Uh -huh. You know, we were b-boys. Wave was there from the beginning. Introduced to the scene in the housing projects. And the projects, they used to come downstairs and they used to set up their equipment and we would just travel by foot from project to project. There was a rope, there was the, 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 the equipment, there was the DJs, there was the MCs, so they needed the B-boys. The B-boys, what you would call, would be the energy. Wave says he was inspired by the king of pop himself, whose dance moves with the Jackson 5 were showcased on shows like Soul Train. When I was a child, to see Michael Jackson do the robot and Dance the Machine, the song, took me down that road. I, I was a big fan of that. I was a fan of the mime, mm -hmm. you know, the illusion part of dance, you know, so I could, I combined those two. Wave eventually joined a group called the New York City Breakers, a breaking crew that would cement him in hip hop history. What did that mean back then to get a shot? We couldn't walk the streets. The kids were so empowered and they just wanted to be around us and we gave them that. I danced so much, uh, 20, 30 times a day, every time I walked, you know, because of the film Beat Street. That 1984 movie, Beat Street, was one of the first to feature breaking and hip hop culture, putting both on the map. Stop looking, listen, and check this out. Beat Street. Beat Street. The film's executive producer, Harry Belafonte, promoting it on Good Morning America. What the people involved in this culture have done is that they have reached out to the world and said, look, we exist, we're here. Many of you have come, seen our plight, our problems. You've made promises. Most of the promises have been broken. And uh, we have been left for forgotten. And we will find a way to reach out to the world and make you know that we're here. He understood, but he also understood that for it to get global, he had to add those other elements. He didn't do it for hip hop, per se. He did it for the world. The more people learned about breaking, the more it evolved. You have the electric boogie, you have the boogie, and you have the boogaloo. If you're in San Diego, they may be doing the boogaloo, and they may be doing, you know, a, 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 a pop locking in L.A. And then in New York, in the Bronx, they're doing the electric boogie, but they're doing the tick out in Brooklyn. It's evolving so much that the Olympics had to take a look at it. The art form that began in the streets has now become a competitive sport with a fixed set of rules. And at next year's Summer Olympics in Paris, for the first time ever, breakers from all over the world will compete for the gold medal. Two events, one for men and one for women, will consist of one-on-one -on -one battles where dancers perform multiple throwdowns or sets that are then judged on creativity, personality, technique, variety, performativity, and musicality. One of the Olympic hopefuls, right out of Flushing, Queens, Sonny Choi, will represent the U.S. in the women's competition. When you first started breakdancing, could you have ever imagined that this art form could have ended up as an Olympic sport? No, never imagined breaking being the Olympics. And then it got announced officially. Um, and even then, I think there were so many people who were like, there's no way, like someone's playing a prank on us, you know? Choi had been a lifelong gymnast, but injuries forced her to find a new sport. A popping dance class at college in Philadelphia led her to breaking. What I ended up really falling in love with is like the aspect of self-expression and creativity, um, because those are things that I hadn't had in my life before. I'd grown up with like a very like kind of strict like academic background. 
And so this is the first time that I was able to actually like go out there and figure out who I am and express that. A Wharton School grad, Choi left the corporate marketing world behind to pursue breaking professionally. With the announcement of the Olympics, I was like, maybe it's possible for me to actually do what I love to do and do something that makes me happy. You're a Korean American woman performing a historically black art form. What does it say about the culture's growth and, mm -hmm. and the heights that it's reached? Mm -hmm. And in that same vein, what do you feel like you owe the culture? I've actually always struggled with my place in hip hop because I'm a Korean American woman, because I felt like I don't quite belong or I don't quite fit. What I've learned over time is this whole culture has been so open and actually like warm and welcoming to me. And it was really just me telling myself I didn't belong. Because of everything I've gotten from it, it's like I want to give back and I'm honored to be able to carry this legacy forward, honored to be able to stand on that stage and represent New York and the U.S. and breaking and hip hop and all of that. I remember this. History that began with an OG, like the wave, and now enshrined at the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx. What do you think about the Olympics adding breakdancing and it, it's going to be making its debut in 2024? I'm not mad at it. Could you have imagined that you'd be here today commemorating the 50th anniversary of a genre that didn't even have a name back then. No, I'm in awe, you know, but I'm so humble and so pleased and so proud. You have to still preserve the legends, the one who started it all. I don't think anybody else will be able to dance with three presidents like I did. Bush, Reagan, and Barack Obama. That's mine. You can't erase me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.